Welcome to The Painting Coach, where things are warming up on the channel this week as we paint the avatar of Kane. Now in this video we'll be focusing on the armour, the gold trim, as well as the head, and we'll be doing all the glowy, fiery, molten bits in part two. To get started, I've built the model, I've just left the shoulder pads and that gold plating off the chest, and I've sprayed it Corax White. The first thing I want to do is paint those darker metallic colours, and the colour I'm going to use for that is Rune Lord Brass. In terms of the areas I'm targeting, I'm looking at parts of the helmet as well as the side of the helmet and also parts of the weapon. If you're not entirely sure, check the box art. Next up, I want to paint the haft of the weapon and the colour I'm going to use for this is Lead Belcher. Now, you've gone over quite a light undercoat, so you may want to use two coats. Just keep that paint thin because you don't want to obscure any. Now that both those dark metal colours are dry, it's time to shade them all and the colour we're going to use for this is Null Oil. Really simple, we're just going to paint this all over those areas, just making sure it doesn't pool anywhere. We'll start highlighting next, so we're going to use two techniques for this. The first one is going to be an edge highlight, and we're going to use Rune Lord Brass again, just to bring that colour back up slightly. To highlight those helmet sides and get a nice smooth transition from the Rune Lord Brass into a silver colour, we're going to now dry brush using a makeup brush some Rune Lord Brass. Take your time and just blend this very, very slowly, making sure that you don't go too overboard. Next up, we'll continue in this area using Lead Belcher, and we're going to dry brush it in exactly the same way, aiming for maybe that top 33% or top third. Now I'm using the same brush that I used before, so it's going to blend in really nicely. The last dry brush highlight, which I'm going to do using a slightly larger, softer makeup brush, is going to be with Necron Compound. And I'm going to do this right on those top edges of the sides of the helmet. And I'm also going to use this along the haft of the weapon to really bring out those rooms. We'll finish up highlighting the brass next before we add that final sharp highlight to all the silver areas. And the colour we're going to use for this is Canoptic Alloy. Again, we're looking to get a really good point on the brush and just focus it on the most prominent areas. The last highlight we're going to use across all the areas is going to be Chrome for Vallejo Model Air. And very simply, all we're going to do is get a little bit on our brush, make sure we've got a really good tip. We're going to drag this along the hard, sharp edges of the model and this will give us a really nice crisp highlight. With all those metallics done, it's time to focus on the armour. The colour we're going to use for this is Corn Red. Just make sure that you've got a nice even coverage across all the plates. Don't worry too much if you go over the gold trim because we're going to base this again later. Just make sure you work it in right up to those edges. Next up we'll shade all those armour plates and the colour we're going to use is Null Oil. Now the key with this is to make sure it doesn't pool too heavily so that you've got a really dark area. We just want to tint and darken that corn red. Make sure all that Null Oil is dry and then we'll go in with highlights. Now the first colour we're going to use is once again corn red and this is why we didn't want it too dark because this will give us a nice transition. We're looking to catch any sharp edges with a chunky highlight as well as any wide areas where we can just focus that corn red to give us a nice bright colour. The next highlight we're going to use is with Mephiston Red, and again we're looking to target those same sort of areas as we did with Corn Red, except making this highlight a little smaller. So just make sure you've only got a little bit on your brush, you've got a really good tip on there, and you're really focusing and getting a nice sharp edge. The last but one highlight on the red is going to be with Wild Rider Red. And what we're looking for here is once again to cover those same areas as Mephiston, but making that highlight that little bit sharper. Again, where we've got those wide sweeping areas, such as on the back of the calf, and where we've got musculature in the armour, we want to just make it really nice and sharp using a good point on the brush. The absolute last highlight on the red is going to be with Fire Dragon Bright, and in terms of how we apply this, we're just looking to put little dot highlights on those sharpest edges, so where we've got little points, where we've got corners, anywhere you feel like it. Start off with a little, it's always easy to add more. Next up, we'll move on to the leather, and the colour we're going to use is a bad and black. So paint this over all those leather areas, being careful when you come to the torso, because we want to keep that Corax white. We can paint over it, but it just saves time if we're careful. Whilst we've got the bad and black out, we're also going to paint the hair. If you're not sure how this looks, check the box art. We're just looking for sections in a little bit of a pattern. We'll highlight the leather and the hair in the same way, using Mechanica Standard Grey. In terms of how we're going to do this, make sure you've got a really good point on your brush and very little paint on there. And we're just going to drag it along those sharp raised edges and this will give us a really nice consistent highlight. We'll apply the gold next for all the trim and those sole gems. Now I'm going to focus around the head area for this video, but we are going to paint all the gold trim exactly the same way. And the first thing to do is take some Retributor Armour and use this to base any and all gold areas. When that Retribute Drama is down, let's go and take some Reichland Flesh Shade. And we're going to use this to shade all of those gold areas to give us some nice warmth to it. Once that Reichland Flesh Shade is dry, we'll take some Liberator Gold and we'll use this to highlight along those sharp edges and any areas that are pointing upwards and that are prominent. 
Now, if you want, you can add a final chrome highlight, but I'm going to stick just to Liberator Gold. And again, make sure you do this over all the gold trim, not just the areas I'm showing you here. If you need to, go in and repair any white parts with Corax White. We'll then take some Apothecary White and paint this over all the white parts of the hair. We also add a little bit to the face, just under the nose, where we want to get a little bit of definition, and that isn't that kind of orange glow look we see on the box. When that Apothecary White is dry, we're going to take some white scar, and we're going to use this exactly the same way as we highlighted the black. We're going to pick out those individual strands to give a nice texture effect on that hair or plume, whatever we want to call it. Whilst we've got the white scar out, we also want to paint all those soul gems, and we also want to highlight the face as well, including those eyes. Now there are a lot of soul gems on this model, but painting them is really easy. We've got a pinky one and a turquoisey one, so we're going to use pterodon turquoise on the turquoise soul gems, and we're going to use volupus pink on the pink soul gems. To add the glow around the face and the eyes, we're going to take some Griffhound orange contrast paint, now you need to get a little bit on your brush and then wipe it on a paper towel so there's even less on there and paint it around the area and also use it to line where the helmet and the face meet and also pop it in that mouth area. When that's dry just take some white scar and highlight that area back up around the face and this will leave that nice soft orange glow around the edges and around those eyes. It's really easy and a real simple technique. And there you have it, that's part one of how to paint the avatar of Kane. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Check back soon for the second part where we do all the fiery, molten, cool stuff. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Leave a like, a comment, and I'll see you next time.